Hi, my name is Jody Shen, and I'll be showing some common causes of missed and misinterpreted bleeds on CT angiography. After reviewing this video, participants will be able to describe the essential components of a CTA for bleeding evaluation, recognize common causes of misses and misinterpretations, and describe a common sense approach to identifying bleeds on CTA. First, a brief discussion on protocols. This is essential. A CTA bleeding protocol should include non-contrast arterial and delayed phases. The non-contrast images help identify high attenuation material, such as surgical material or calcification that can be mistaken for extravasated contrast. The CTA images delineate vascular anatomy and identify an arterial source of bleeding if present. The delayed phase increases sensitivity for slow or subtle bleeds. Now, why does the delayed phase help? If you have a bleed that's pouring into a container with greater time elapsed, more volume goes into that container, which makes it easier to detect. An alternative protocol would be to use dual energy CT to derive non-enhanced or virtual non-contrast images. Now we'll go into some case examples. Typical findings of an active bleed on CTA are an arterial blush of contrast absent on non-contrast images that pools and, and changes shape on the delayed phase. This seems pretty straightforward, but as we will see in the subsequent case examples, evaluation for a bleed can be quite complicated. A 98-year-old man presented to the emergency department with hematochesia and left lower quadrant pain. The study was protocoled as a routine CT of the abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast. No acute abnormality was identified. Three hours later, the study was repeated as a dedicated GI bleed protocol CTA. The arterial phase shows a blush of luminal contrast material in the transverse colon that changes in size and morphology on the delayed phase, consistent with an active bleed. This highlights the importance of appropriate protocoling for diagnosis. This next case is of a 70-year-old man with a groin hematoma following endovascular abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. Sometimes we tend to focus on the arterial phase and ignore the delayed phase. In this case, the bleed is very subtle on arterial phase. On the delayed phase, however, active bleeding into the groin hematoma is very obvious. Now, if you look back at this area on the CTA, you can see how the subtle focus of contrast extravasation could be confused for a traversing blood vessel. This seems very basic, but I can't stress enough the importance of looking at all of your phases. This is a companion case of an 89-year-old female who presented with a stroke with a groin hematoma after endovascular thrombectomy. On CTA, a focus of hyperattenuation is seen adjacent to the right common femoral artery. This is called active extravasation. However, it does not change in size or shape on the delayed phase. On close inspection of the non-contrast image, there is a focus of hyperattenuation that represents the dislodged anchor or foot plate of the vascular closure device. In the same patient, active extravasation was also reported in the perineum. This would be quite unexpected since this area was not accessed. On non-contrast and arterial phase images, we see no extravasation of contrast material. On the delayed phase, there are lobulated contrast-filled structures surrounding the anus consistent with hemorrhoids, which are dilated veins that you would expect to fill on a delayed phase. A coronal image on delayed phase again shows that these are hemorrhoids and not active extravasation. Sometimes when there's evidence of recent bleeding, we may look too hard for an active bleed that's not there. This is a 71-year-old man who had a recent small bowel resection for obstruction. On this non-contrast image, we see blood products within the right hemiabdomen on soft tissue and liver windows. This triangular enhancing focus adjacent to the gallbladder was called a pseudoaneurysm. 
Now, this may seem like a reasonable conclusion in a patient with hemoperitoneum with no corresponding hyperattenuation on the pre-contrast images. However, we should note that it retains this triangular shape on arterial and delayed phases and does not have the same enhancement characteristics as the systemic arteries. On coronal and sagittal images, it's clear that it's not an arterial structure. This has the morphologic characteristics of a lymph node. To reassure ourselves, we can compare it to other lymph nodes, such as its aortocaval lymph node. Comparison studies are also helpful. We see that this portahepatitis lymph node was present on the prior study and are confident that this is not a pseudoaneurysm. Beware of the distractors. Bleeding evaluation on CTA can be exceedingly difficult on complicated pa patients. This 84-year-old female underwent elective percutaneous coronary intervention, which was complicated by left iliac artery injury. On the non-contrast images, we see left pelvic hematoma admixed with contrast material from the cast. This is a case that requires rigorous comparison of all phases. I usually line up all phases on PACS and focus on the arterial and delayed phases for contrast extravasation. If I see a suspicious area, I then refer to the non-contrast images to see if it was already there. It's like a game of can you spot the differences? For example, we see some hyperattenuating material in this loop of small bowel on arterial and delayed phases, but it was already present on the non-contrast image, so we know it's not active bleeding. Further down, we see contrast material within the left pelvic hematoma on the delayed phase that wasn't there on the pre-contrast image, which is consistent with active extravasation. The inferior epigastric artery bleed was difficult to see on the CTA. This again highlights how important the delayed phase is to increase your sensitivity for subtle or slow bleeds. Similarly, this next bleed was a challenging case due to, due to distractors of many abdominal wall and intraperitoneal fluid collections in a 75-year-old woman with necrotizing pancreatitis and bloody drain output. First of all, the clinical history is already telling you where to look, around the drain. The sentinel clot sign can also help narrow your search. Recall that the sentinel clot is focal high attenuation clotted blood that provides a clue to the source of hemorrhage. On our non-contrast image, we see sentinel clot around the drain, which is emphasized on liver windows. Axial and coronal CTA images show a focus of contrast extravasation within Waldorf necrosis. This was another challenging case on a 67-year-old male with lower GI bleeding. This was difficult because of variant anatomy and pre-existing high attenuation material in the colon. Sometimes we focus on the stomach and colon and don't pay enough attention to the small bowel. It's important to follow the bowel as much as possible, such as in this case of a bleeding Meckel's diverticulum. We see this diverticular outpouching from a loop of small bowel that has a contrast level within it on arterial phase. This is absent on the non-contrast image and increases on the delayed phase consistent with a bleeding Meckel's diverticulum. Here's the coronal CTA image of the Meckel's diverticulum and corresponding SMA angiogram showing the active bleed. This case highlights the importance of following the vessels, including the distal branches. A 67-year-old woman with rheumatoid arthritis presented with severe upper abdominal pain and shortness of breath with hypotension. The hemoperitoneum is clear on this axial CTA image, but it's hard to see the vessel abnormality. Now on this maximum intensity projection, we see the focal contrast outpouching along the splenic artery. A coronal MIP CTA image shows a lobulated, inferiorly directed contrast outpouching from the splenic artery. This is a pseudoaneurysm. Two days later, the pseudoaneurysm ruptured with massive hemoperitoneum. It's important to follow all the vessels when you're looking for a bleed, 
In this case, we pay special attention to the pancreas because that's where the hemorrhage is centered. Iatrogenic bleeds are, all, are quite common, so I pay attention to the course or tract of a recently placed line or tube. This was a 66-year-old man with hyperattenuating left pleural fluid noted on recent chest CT following chest tube placement. No bleed was identified initially. On closer inspection, however, a focus of extravasated contrast is seen along the course of the chest tube as it crosses the intercostal space, likely due to an intercostal artery injury. This was a 65-year-old man who presented with bright red blood per rectum after a recent colonoscopy with polypectomy. This bleed was also not detected initially. We see a metallic object in the cecum on initial non-contrast images, which is a hemostatic endoscopy clip from recent polypectomy. The arterial blush of contrast around the endoscopy clip is quite subtle, but the pooling of contrast on delayed phase helps identify the post-polypectomy bleed. In this case, focusing on the site of recent intervention is very helpful. This bleed was actually detected, but the case again highlights the importance of looking around the site of a newly placed line or tube. An 86-year-old female became hypotensive after recent gastrostomy tube placement. On non-contrast images, the stomach is distended with hyperattenuating content. Arterial and delayed phases show contrast extravasation along the gastric wall at the gastrostomy site. In summary, there are many pitfalls to CTA bleeding evaluation that can be avoided. We have reviewed the essential components of the CTA for bleeding evaluation and highlighted how important the protocol is for accurate diagnosis. We need non-contrast arterial and delayed phases for complete evaluation. Omitting any of these phases can lead to false negatives or false positives. We have also reviewed the common causes of missed and misinterpreted bleeds, including forgetting to look at the delayed phase, forgetting to look at the non-contrast images, confusing normally enhancing structures for bleeds, and getting distracted by abnormalities and complicated inpatients. We have also discussed some tips and tricks to detect bleeds on CTA. These include approaching a bleeding study methodically and using the clinical history to help narrow your search. If the clinical team is telling you that the drain has bloody output, look around the drain. If the tube has been newly inserted, look around the tube. Those are the common sense rules that I stick to when approaching a CTA for bleeding evaluation, and they have helped me identify subtle bleeds. Thank you for your attention. Like and subscribe for more videos and comment down below what topics you'd like us to cover.